Now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Ken, and thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh, alongside Gene Collier, we're taking your phone calls tonight. 412-575-2600 is the number, and we're talking about the Buckos tonight. A tough loss for the Pirates. They just got crushed tonight at PNC Park. I don't know what the crowd is. I'm sure we'll find out the attendance a little bit later, but I know not a lot of people were there. They lose this game. The Cardinals, uh, not the Cardinals, the Diamondbacks scored nine runs, and this game was basically over in the first two innings, Gene. Chad Cole didn't have his game. He had pitched a pretty good outing against the Reds. Uh, that was his 14th start. He falls to 5-5 five and five now. He didn't make it through the third inning. Eight hits, eight runs, all earned, and his ERA basically went up a point after tonight. Mm. Well, you know, this is what uh, you're getting with the Pirates uh, rotation, not just the younger part of the rotation, but the entire rotation. You just never know what you're going to get from a starter from one night to the next. And, you know, the, therefore, you know, you've, you've got problems. That's, any team that has that has problems. Yeah, and the, and the Pirates dropped to two games under 500 now. Right. And, I, you know, I really thought, <coughs> excuse me, this was – uh, the time that the Pirates could kind of get back into this, having all these games at home, especially against teams that they'll be competing with at some point or the other, like the Brewers, the Reds, uh, winning games in the Central, but also the Diamondbacks, because the Diamondbacks could potentially be a wild card team. Right now they're, they're leading the NL West over there, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of good teams in the West. So this is a team that you have to beat, and then you come out and you perform like this and just completely get demolished, I don't think it's a good sign. And I, I know I, I'm trying to be optimistic about the Pirates, and I know you haven't been at times, and neither have I. And it, it is tonight, I think this is more of what this Pirates team is than what it was against the Reds. Well, you know, this is a 10-game homestand, and it's one of those uh, homestands at a juncture in the season where you have to get seven or eight of them. And so far they've gotten, what, three of them? Three. Yeah. Three of the five. five well, no, games. now, yeah, three three and three. Yep. Right. Well, it, it's been reduced to a nine-game homestand because of the rainout. But, yeah, I mean, you've, uh, the Pirates have to win the majority of these games to keep themselves in a position. Uh, the Brewers are winning tonight 10-2, to two, so they'll go back up to eight games ahead of the Pirates, but with 88 to play. Yeah, there's a lot of games left, and they do have fi a five-game series, essentially, with the Brewers at home in July and for some reason, if they can win all five, and they're back in this. But, you know, one of the things I was thinking about today, and one of the things I want to talk about, I know I always harp on it, and you do, Ron does, Bob does, the fact that this team did not sign a major league free agent this year. And a guy that they could have signed for basically pennies was a guy like John Jay. They needed an outfielder at one point before they got Dickerson. John Jay completely tears up the Pirates. He has 107 hits in 108 games, has a 331 lifetime average, and this guy's not worth three million to the Pirates? I mean, what, what is going on? Like, uh, I think something like this, the scouting department definitely dropped the ball because this is the guy you don't want to beat you, so the best way not to beat you is to sign a guy like this because he's a much better, per, a much better player than a guy like Sean, Riguez, Sean Rodriguez, even though he's not as versatile as Rodriguez. But, I mean... This is a free agent they could have signed. Well, yeah, but I don't know if you can pin it on the scouting department. You have to pin it on the nutting, don't you? Well, that's yeah. It, you're right, and that's where it comes down to this money thing. And I, I keep talking about they have the fourth lowest payroll in the majors. They're $50 million under league average. And, and you know, you, you could have gotten some goodwill with the fans. That's why there's only 10000 there at the games. Could have gotten some goodwill if you just sign a guy like John Jay. Well, you know, attendance was going to be severely diminished at this year anyway with the dismissal of McCutcheon and Cole. But, yeah, nothing was really done to, uh, to rectify that. Uh, you know, they did get some decent players in Dickerson and Moran, but nobody really knew those guys prior to the start of the season, and that's why attendance is off, uh, you know, whatever it is, 25%. Yeah, yeah off a awful lot. All right, well, we're going to take a break here, but before we go to break, we got another sizzling shot for you from Roots Chris All and right. another high five to a local golfer who had a hole-in-one. This is <clears> – sorry. The sizzling shot is brought to you by Roots Chris at 6 PPG Place downtown, home of the sizzling steak. It's done right, Gene. we got to go there someday. 
one of my favorite places, one of the best stakes around. Some of those gift certificates will be right over there. Yeah, 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 definitely. But we have a guy, Wildwood Country Club, had a hole in one today. We'll talk about him coming up a little bit later in the show, but right now we got to go to break. Back with some of your phone calls and some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.